Well, thank you very much. Um, it is truly humbling uh, to be in this space. Um, I was saying to a couple people this morning, uh, I walked, I got into the room about seven o'clock this morning and I, I prayed over each uh, row and area uh, that the Holy Spirit would move among us in a mighty and amazing way. And, uh, and then uh, I felt quite comfortable in that prayer. And then you all started filing in. <laughs> and, and it's a quite intimidating room. And, um, but um, I'm going to ask the Holy Spirit to bind uh, my nervousness, to bind my fear, to bind my anxiety with his power. And so, and I'm going, uh, I believe that God has given me a word uh, to give to you today. And uh, I say it with all the grace and mercy, uh, love and truth that I can give to you. And so I pray that you receive it. I pray that God does a work in your life through the Holy Spirit and through this word. I also want to thank uh, Ashish and Rosie uh, for setting a wonderful foundation of, uh, of just good teaching. And, uh, and so I thank you for them. Uh, I also want to honor my wife. Um, she's amazing. So, and beautiful. You can tell her that after we're all done today. Um, but um, I, I say shout with joy to God all the earth. Sing glory to his name. Make his praise glorious. Say to God right now in this moment, right now today, how awesome are your deeds. So great is your power that the enemies cringe before you. That all the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. This day is sacred to our Lord. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Do not grieve for the joy of the Lord will be your strength. I pray that on you today. I'm going to read a portion of scripture. It comes from Philippians. I've spent a lot of time in this passage of scripture over the past year and a bit. And God has been moving in my life and teaching me things uh, through this passage of Scripture. And I want to read it to you in, in two different ways. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say it again. Rejoice in the Lord. Let your gentleness be evident to all the Lord is near. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and petition... With thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, the peace of God will transcend all of your understanding. And it will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And if you can put up that next, um, this is the message passage. It says, uh, if you can put that up, please. Uh, it says, celebrate God all day, every day. Celebrate Him. I mean, revel in Him. Make it as clear as you can to all that you meet that you are on their side. Working with them, not against them. Help them to see that the Master is about to arrive, that he could show up any minute. Please, Lord, come now. <laughs> Don't fret or worry. Instead of worrying, pray. Let your petitions and your praises shape your worries into prayers. Letting God know all of your concerns, and before you know it, a sense of God's wholeness. Everything coming together for good will come and settle you down. It's wonderful what happens when Christ displaces worry at the center of your life. So about a year and a half ago, um, most of 2018, I was, I was having this stomach pain. And it would cripple me for days. 
And I would literally cry. I'd be in fetal position, crying, wondering what is going on, and then it would go away and I wouldn't worry about it. And then a couple weeks later, it would happen again. And it started about once a month, and it was twice a month, then it was once a week, then it was two or three times a week. And by that time, Suzanne said, you need to go see the doctor. I'm a bit stubborn that way. That's okay. God, forgive me. So I went and I saw the doctor and the doctor said, look, we've got to, we've got to look at your insides. It's, it's probably an adhesion from another surgery or you've got a, a blockage or some sort. So he sent me away. I went and got a test. And he called me later that day and he said, I need to see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. I thought, oh, okay. And in the first meeting with him, he was quite jovial. He loved American football. We talked about it. We didn't talk about much about my illness, but that's okay. Yeah. And here we were. I, I, I get into the doctor's office. I see the doctor come, and I could see it in his face. I could see that there was something different. He was a doctor. And as we sat at his desk, he said, Bill, I'm really, I, I want to apologize to you because I misdiagnosed you. He said, you have a tumor in your bowel. And he said, it's about seven centimeters. Your bowel, by the way, is only 10 centimeters wide. So this was blocking my bowel. And he said, the type of tumor you have, we believe what's, it's called, what's called a carcinoid tumor. And 98% of the time, they're cancerous. It wasn't what I was exactly expecting that morning. Before I left the doctor's office, I was in tears. I walked down to my car. I could barely get into my car. I was fiddling with it. Couldn't figure out how the door handle was working. My eyes were just blotted with tears. I called Suze and I said, Suze, this is what's going on. And being the great and wonderful woman that she is, she said, well, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. I started to drive down the road. I was in Gosford. I pulled over at a petrol station and I sat there for about 20 minutes. I cried. I cried. I said, God, what, what is going on here? This passage came to my mind. God, in that moment, gave me a vision of joy. He gave me a vision of joy. Stuart said it, you know, when the Holy Spirit comes, sometimes a bit dodgy. That's my best Australian. That's as good as you're going to get. But in that moment, I sat in my car, and, and here I am. I'm, I'm faced with the, the possibility that I, I have cancer. And God is saying, celebrate me. Celebrate me. Celebrate me all day, every day. So here we are, a week before Christmas. We're planning this trip to America. We go to America. Uh, uh, the doctor says, you need to get this out now. It's going to get worse. I said, no, nope, I'm going to America. He's like, well, okay. So I get to America. Suzanne, as good as she is, she calls all the doctors, get all the doctor's appointments within a week. She can be quite persuasive. <laughs> Let me tell you. And we got all the doctors that we need to see, and about three, four weeks later, they took 42 centimeters of my bow out. Don't worry, you got about seven meters. I have plenty left. Sitting in hospital, the doctor comes in and he says, you know, we've got to send this away for a biopsy. I said, okay, that's, you know, great. Everything's fine. You know, surgery went well, no problems. Shoot, I had to end my stomach modeling career, but um, <laughs> well, that's all right. It wasn't going so well anyways. Um, 
so we, we get this out. I get out of the hospital. Uh, the day I get out of the hospital, Suzanne and the kids have to fly back to America. So there I am. I had plenty of time with God in recuperating and healing. About a week later, the, the doctor calls and he says, um, Bill, the biopsies come back. And he said, uh, you, didn't have, uh, you didn't have one tumor, you had four. And they had begun to grow together. And he said, we, we, temp- we tested your lymph nodes. We tested 15 of them. And nine out of 15 of them were cancerous. And so he said, we, we've got to send you for another test. I said, okay. I said, you know, what does that mean? And he was a great doctor, very straightforward. I appreciate that so much. And he said, you probably have more. So he sent me for this test, and, and sure enough, he, he called me later, uh, later, I think the next day, and he calls me and he said, Bill, you have eight to ten in this section of your body. Eight to ten. I have a cancer that's called uh, noroendocrine cancer. It's incurable. The doctors say, other, and, and somebody rebuked me when I said this before, but I'll say it again and you can rebuke me again. But the doctor said, I'll never be cancer free, ever. Without God's healing. So what do you do when that happens? What do you do in life when everything is going great and then suddenly it just crashes to the ground? All of your expectations, all of the things that you have for life, what do you do? And God again, in the midst of the room at the training college in New York, he said, celebrate me. Have joy. And again, I was like, God, you're nuts. Absolutely bonkers. How am I supposed to celebrate you? So here I'm in New York, I realize the uh, doctor says, you know, you have cancer, blah, 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 and uh, we'll, we'll deal with it. And they, they did um, a bunch of different things and set a prognosis and a treatment plan. And then um, the next thing I know, I get a, a letter from the lawyer, from our immigration lawyer. And they said, uh, Australia's revoked your visa because you've stayed in America too long. So like, okay. Great, wonderful, fantastic. So we talked to the lawyer and the lawyer says, when you come back to Australia, you won't be able to work for three months. You won't be able to preach. You won't be able to do anything for three months. That was devastating to my heart. It was devastating to my heart that I couldn't minister or worship. But God said, celebrate me. He said, celebrate me. So there's this, ver- there's this uh, word in this, uh, this message um, version that says revel. Revel. And I like words. I like finding the meaning of words. So I had to look up this word. I had to look up revel. Can you put the, the meaning of that? Revel means to take great pleasure. If you revel in something, you're not just pleased or even excited but you're overwhelmed with joy. And this was the verse, this is the word that God gave to me. Revel in him. Be overwhelmed by his joy, despite the circumstances, despite the fact that you can't work, uh, despite the fact that you have cancer that will not be curable other than God touching me. He said, be overwhelmed by my joy that the joy of the Lord will be your strength. Let it. Don't grieve the day, but let the joy of the Lord be your strength. How many times do we get caught up in the messiness, in the chaos, in the cancer, in the worry, in the grief, in the nuttiness, in the craziness, and we forget to revel in God. It blocks us, it prevents us, it creates uh, 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 a wall between us 
I'm American, don't think anything else I'm saying about the wall, please. <laughs> but it creates a blockage with us. Between God, these life circumstances that come to us, we allow them. We allow them to create a barrier between ourselves and God where God is saying in your worst times, in the times that are absolutely sucky, come and revel in me, celebrate in me. Be overwhelmed by my joy. 1 Thessalonians 5, the Passion Version, says, let joy be your continual feast. How do you like that? Let joy be your continual feast. Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in every and all circumstances, for this is God's will in Christ Jesus. It doesn't say give thanks in some circumstances. It doesn't say give thanks in a couple of circumstances, but it says give thanks in all circumstances, every, every circumstance. Give thanks, celebrate me. I wonder that we as Christians, we forgot how to celebrate God. And to not only celebrate God, but let that be our continual feast in who we are, that we are celebrating and having joy and taking joy in God. I wonder if we need to pray the prayer of David after Nathan came to him, where he says, restore to me the joy of your salvation. I wonder if that needs to be our prayer now. Is that God, we're in a rut. We need you to, we've, we've been sinful. We've lost friends. We've lost partners. We've lost children. We've been diagnosed with cancer. Workday sucks. You know, whatever it is. <laughs> whatever it is. I say that as a joke, but I'm serious. How many times when we gather together and we just whinge about workday or this process or that process, how about you just shut up and celebrate God? The prayer of David. Create in me a pure heart. Create in me a pure heart. Take anything that's unclean away. And restore unto me the joy of your salvation. And then the second line to that is, and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. To sustain me. When I was going through all that, I, I, something prompted me, I don't know if it was a friend, I'm sure it was the Holy Spirit, but prompted me to read uh, Habakkuk. Habakkuk, however you say it, who cares? Um, and, and I wrote my own translation to this passage. I wrote my own translation. I like to do that so that it gets surplanted into my brain. It says, I may not be with my family. My family was away in Australia and I was in America. The doctor wouldn't release me. I may not be with my family. My body may be filled with sickness. Though I am unable to work in Australia, there may be not an opportunity to fulfill the passion of preaching and teaching that I have. Though I may not be in Tucker as God has placed me and anointed me, but I will still be glad because of what the Lord has done. God, my Savior, is the one who fills, with me, fills me with joy. Nothing else in this world fills me with joy. My life has changed. You know what the, the insidious thing about this is? I thank God every day for cancer. I know I'm nuts. It's okay. Jesus still loves me. I thank God for cancer because it's given me a joy that I didn't have before. When I look at my life before cancer, I realize that I was wasting my days. I was wasting my time with my wife, with my children, in my ministry. So, I lose my visa 
And I've got to apply again. And in, for this to happen, uh, the doctor had to do a prognosis, like a life expectancy. All right. Real fun, by the way. So the doctor writes this out and he sends me a copy. And he says, uh, the, the patient uh, has a life expectancy of 107 months. You want to know how long 107 months is? It's about eight and a half years. How do you celebrate God in that? But God continually said, it's all right. Everybody else is going to die. You will too. Because <laughs> you have this sense before somebody tells you that you're sick or that you're going to die, that you're going to live forever. Don't you? You live with this reckless abandonment. You think you're, you know, you're going to live forever. And here's the doctor. Official letterhead. It says you have 107 months, 109 months to live. I called Suzanne that day. And I wept. I wept. Because instantly, you know what I thought about? My daughter would be turning 21. Would I be able to walk her down the aisle? I instantly thought that my son would be 16. Would I teach him how to drive? Would I be the one, the father, to teach him how to drive? That's, that's the thoughts that went into my head instantly. So I thank God for cancer. You know why? Because I don't want to waste a day with my kids. I don't waste a day. Crosby, before cancer, he'd want to show me every YouTube possible. Every video he was watching, he wanted to make sure I would see. And I said, mate, we'll do that later. He'd want to go climb a tree or take a walk or play a video game. And he'd be, I'd be like, oh, mate, come on, get off it. You can do it yourself. I watch every YouTube video now. I take every walk. I play every game. We've got to learn to celebrate God in the right now. Because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. So we've all got things that we bring to this table in ourselves. We've got the worries of the world. We've got grief that we've, uh, that we've brought with us. We've got burdens that we've brought with us. We've got pain that we've brought with us. We've got brokenness of marriages that we've brought with us. We've got cancer that we brought with us. And what God is saying is just don't worry about those things as hard as it is not to worry about them. Don't let worry be the worry of your life. Let joy be your continual feast. Make your life a prayer. Make your life a prayer. And in that Philippians version, and it says the peace of God will transcend your understanding. It will transcend, transform, rewire, however you want to put in there. Rejoice, pray, and the peace of God will transcend your understanding. I think we've lost not just the Salvation Army, but Christians in a general, I think we've lost the spirit of joy. We've lost the spirit of joy. Now it's funny, Susan and I, Suzanne and I have a joke every time we come to fellowship. And this isn't an indictment on any of you. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> We come to this place, and you know, as people are gathering and as people are coming in, we make a joke we can tell the Salvationist. Because none of them say hi. As we walk by, they walk by. I think it was two years ago, we said hi to somebody and they put their head down. 
And then we saw them in the session later. We've lost the sense of joy, not just within ourselves, but in the world. We have lost the sense that we are the joy bringers. That we have been given the responsibility of God to bring the joy of the Lord to the world. So that it can not only be our strength, but it can be their strength too. Because they're living without strength, they just don't know it. We can be the joy bringers. We can bring the joy, we can be the joy bringers. 1 Peter 1.8 says, Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you don't see him right now, you believe in him. And you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. How many of you believe in Jesus? How many of you believe that you are the redeemed of the Lord? Then you are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy of the Lord. Act like it. Bring it to your neighborhood. Bring it to your core. Bring it to your community. When you had a bad day, when things in life are not going well, That's when you celebrate God. And I have found that when I don't want to celebrate God, that's the very time that I need to celebrate God the most. I need to take joy. I I can't live with burdens. She said that the other day. You you, You can't walk in heavy laden and burdened before God and say, God, here I am. Come with joy. Be the joy. So I wonder today, what do you need to leave? What worry is on your heart this morning? What have you brought to this place that you've been carrying for a long time? What worry do you absolutely need to get rid of? It was an old Salvation Army course. I'm, I like to joke that I am a traditional contemporary. All right? But there's an old Salvation Army song that says, all your anxiety, all your care. What's it say? It doesn't say bring it to the mercy seat and pick it back up. It says, leave it there, that when we bring our worries, when we bring our anxieties, when we bring our cares, and we bring them to Jesus, we're meant to leave them there and stand up in joy. What do you do when you don't know what to do? You put your eyes on God. You celebrate Him. You revel in Him. You be overwhelmed by His joy, His inexpressible and glorious joy. How many of you are overwhelmed? By his joy this morning. How many of us are overwhelmed by our worry, our anxiety, and our cares? And it knocks us back from taking joy in the Lord and letting his joy be our strength. Too many of us live with worry as our strength. It's all right, I'll carry this backpack for a little while. It's okay. Let me tell you, the backpack gets heavier and heavier. But we can turn our life into a prayer. Every worry, every concern, every situation, every circumstance. Rejoice in the Lord always. It doesn't say sometimes. It doesn't say on Tuesdays. It doesn't say on Sundays. It says rejoice in the Lord always. Let a praise of the Lord be uh, constantly on your lips. Take joy in him. Shout for joy. Now, I'll finish with this. I love sports. I'm a competitive person. When I watch sports, I believe that the teams can hear me. (laughs) I yell. And I scream. And I'm watching uh, Gridiron at 5 a.m. in the morning while the rest of my house is asleep. And I am still yelling and screaming at the telly. Don't count how many remotes I've broken while watching a sporting event. (laughs) But 
But that was something that convicted me. Is that God said you cheer for this team that doesn't even care about you. You celebrate this team that has no concern for you. I love you. You are my child. You are dearly loved. So why can't we cheer for God? Revel in him. Be overwhelmed by his joy. Be overwhelmed by his joy. The redeemed of the Lord, it says in Isaiah, the redeemed of the Lord will enter Zion with singing. Everlasting joy will crown their heads. Gladness and joy will overtake them and sorrow and sighing will flee. Amen? How many of us want our sorrow and sighing to flee? And that we want to be overtaken by gladness and joy. Well, I say let's bring heaven to earth. Let's crown, let God crown us with his joy and let gladness and joy overtake us so that we can bring uh, an elimination to sorrow and grieving and sighing in the world. Thank you. That was an amen in kids' language. Well done. So I leave this word with you. Revel in him. Revel in him. Be overwhelmed by his joy. Don't be overwhelmed with the pressures of the world or the pressures of the army or the pressures of Satan or the pressures of anything else that are in our, uh, our sphere of who we are. But be overwhelmed by God's joy. I've learned this lesson this year. It was a lesson that took, took cancer for me to learn. And I'm okay with that. God has given me a peace that has transcended all of my understanding. And I'm okay. But some of us have come this week where we're burdened. We're burdened with sickness. We're burdened with worry. We're burdened with grief. Our sighs are a continual measure of who we are. I invite the ensemble to come. I challenge you. I challenge you. Can you help me, mate? I think it comes out. I challenge you that in this time that you will take time to allow the Holy Spirit to convict you. That you'll take time to allow the Holy Spirit to rebuke that worry in your life, that anxiety in your life, that grief in your life, that devastation in your life, that burden that is too heavy to carry. All your anxiety, all your care, this is our mercy seat. Bring it to the mercy seat and leave it there. So I challenge you to come, stand before the cross, lay your worry, your burdens, your sickness, your grief, your sighing, lay it at the foot of the cross and look to Jesus for your help. Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Let it be your strength. So just as they sing, Listen to what the Holy Spirit has to say to you today. Come. Leave it there. 
and be overwhelmed by God's joy. His inexpressible and His glorious joy as they sing, come. Come.